And the title for today is Mama, you ain't done nothing yet. We need red monkeys. <coughs> so what will it be about? The first thing is a story about learning. It's a story about change. It's a story about innovation. But it's also a story about the hectic times we're going through today, which are called Switch 3D. One of the main questions today, which every CEO is asking, uh, how can we learn faster? How can we change faster? And how can we innovate faster? And um, one of the main reasons also is why, why should we do it? So we have the question is why do we have to do it and how can we do it? And I will try to tell you a story in five steps. Why we have to innovate much faster than before and why most organizations are built to innovate. Information has value. But information only has value for people who are passionate about what they do. If people are passionate about what they do and they are passionate about new developments in what they do, then information doesn't have any value. This is something else. So even if you are passionate about the new, but you don't know how to use the internet to put information on the internet or get information on the internet, then you're the same thing like a fish who likes to swim but you can't find water. And then the third slide is about the nature of information. When I started to work, every information was in books and animals. And we had to learn the books and animals. And once we learn them, we do everything. And this is information we call explicit. You can put it on the internet videos or database or whatever. But what, is, what we see today is that not all of the valuable information is explicit. A lot of the valuable information is tacit. And tacit means it's widely available, it's in people their heads. And the only way to get information that is in people their heads is by using social network. So, and now you have three things. And you should ask by yourself, in your organization, do you have these three things? What is happening? Well, we have a global information wave, and the world has changed. The world has changed dramatically over the last five years. It started a long time ago, but the last five years it changed dramatically. And in order to have a discussion about this, I tell, I, I, I call it, or I name the world before today, I call it the 2D world. 2D, two-dimensional flat. It's a world of information shortage. And suddenly, in the last five years, we have an information increase enormously. And today you don't have to go to school because at home you can have water. At home. So everybody can learn now at whatever place, especially with mobile applications. You can learn wherever you want. You have to have the passion. And your manager at work, he can't be the cleverest anymore because he's the people who work with him should be better than he is. So it changed dramatically, and today, because of this change, a lot of organizations are in trouble. Because they didn't adapt. And how do we recognize organizations that are in trouble? Well, there's a lot of going on. So probably, in most of the organizations, management is going on. They don't know what's happening. Or, they don't know anymore. <laughs> And they are not able to innovate. So this is a problem. Jimmy, please answer me. So management is the egg. <laughs> this, and this is not ICT, this is ICT. <laughs> we don't know either. Because so many things change at the same time. So if you think about it, what is the biggest difference today? Well, there is a new generation of people in the world. And this new generation of people, I call 3D smarts. Well, 3D smarts are these guys. <laughs> this is a 3D smart. It's somebody who's born and says, hey, I got a brain. And it works. And I have a talent. I really have a talent. And I have a passion for that talent. A lot of people have talents but no passion. That's a waste. A lot of people have passion for something they don't have a talent. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people have talents and passion but no information. That's a waste. 
that's the reason why we need information. Information is something that let people grow. They become very competent. Only if they have a talent and a passion, you have to give them access to information. That's the reason I'm standing here. This whole thing is about information. But information is only valuable for people with talents and passion. They have to bring them together. So, what is the impact of the global smart wave? Well, the impact is very easy. Today, we are in a moving world. The whole world has become one innovative movement. And the reason for that is, is information. Information has enormous value for 3D smart. And these 3D smarts, they use this information to become creative, new ideas, new ways of doing things, and they become entrepreneurs. And once you have an idea, you become an entrepreneur, that's innovation, and then the world doesn't stop because you have social networks, you have Twitter, you have everything. So every innovation becomes part of the new ecosystem, and that again is information. Today, we are facing a revolution. And I think ICT is part of this revolution. Because you are a service provider for passionate talent who need information to become creative entrepreneurs. So you're part of this thing. Okay, so it's a revolution because organizations are looking for a new kind of balance. We have to leave this kind of company and we go we have to go to another kind of company where passionate talents have access to information from whatever place. Mobile internet, fast, whatever, right? So you are a service provider for passionate talents who are looking for information. And a lot of organizations have a lot of trouble in finding this new culture. <coughs> so you have to build another organization culture in order to make it happen. And this is today a threat. Do you know what is happening to them? This change is going on for everybody. And for a lot of people, what is happening is a threat. For who is this a threat? For all these people with a degree but no passion and talent. For all these managers who are able to work with sheep, but who aren't able to work with 3D smarts who are more clever than they are. For who is an opportunity? For everybody else. For everybody else, for a new kind of managers, a new kind of employees, a new kind of CEOs, a other kind of service providers, it's an opportunity. It's a new world. An organization today has to innovate much faster than before. This is how organizations innovated before. They just improved. But today, we have to innovate. We have to bring new products and services to the market. We have to take risks. We have to be entrepreneurs. But that's only possible if we use information. This is only possible if we don't have sheets or if we have passionate and we need smarts. But in order to do that, we need coaching knowledge. We need another management style. We need other kinds of information processes. Okay. So what I want to explain now is one of the stories. It's about innovation. We are coming from a period where we could survive based on continuous improvement and we go into a period where we have to survive based on continuous innovation. Now this is a completely different ballgame. So what I'm trying to explain is the following stuff. In 2D, suppose you go back five, ten years ago and somebody in the room had an idea. What are the chances that everybody in the room understood that idea? They were pretty big, so of course everybody comes from the same schools, they have the same access to information, so they said, I understand it. What are the chances that you could calculate or return on investment on this idea? Well, they were pretty good because it was just continuous improvement, or it was uh, an innovation, but you could calculate it. So this is a world where we improved by consensus. If not everybody understood, then we didn't do it. But most of the time, everybody understood that you could count if you had a business plan. A business plan is much easier. <coughs> if you can make a business plan, then can you calculate the return on investment? <laughs> so everybody can do it. But in 3D, it's not a world. Because in, suppose now we are in 3D. And some of you, and I think everybody of you, is a 3D smart. You are very passionate about what you do. 
and you're very interested in the new developments, and you have a talent in what you do, and you have access to information. Now suppose you have an idea. Somebody in the room says, I've got an idea. What are the chances that not everybody understands that, 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 that idea? Well, they, they increase, so you will have a conflict. You say, geez, what is that? And the next thing is, you can't calculate anymore what the return on investment is because you didn't understand what he was talking about. That's another problem. So what I'm trying to say is that in 3D, most ideas which are really valuable, not everybody will understand, and you can't calculate the return on investment, and that's a conflict. Now, this is innovation in 3D. So what I'm telling you is that if you become a 3D organization with a 3D management style, and you start using more and more advice and talents of people, the number of conflicts will increase. The moment you have a confrontational idea, and you run into the organization, the organization splits in four groups, always. If everybody says it's a good idea, it's just continues improve. But the moment you have a confrontational idea, a red monkey, you have four groups. And one of the groups are the creators. The creators are people saying, Jesus, I want to, this is one of the best ideas. We have to do it. We're going to, we're going, we're going to pitch it. We're going to have elevated talks. We're going to, we're going to sell it. We're going to, we have to do something with it. And then the second group are the pioneers. The pioneers are people who say, Jesus, I want to be the first one on the team to make this work. I will do it for free. I will do it in, in extra time. I, I, I really want to be on the team. And then the other group are the followers. There are people who say, I don't have the time. I just have to wait to, to see if it works. And then there is another group that says, no way. No way. I kill it. And it's always the same. It's always the same. And sometimes you can be a creator because it's your passion and talent. And the next day, it's another idea, and then you suddenly you're a settler, so it changes all the time, right? And the question is what happens, of course, innovation is networking. So if you want to become an innovative organization, then you have to start networking. Because there are two networks fighting each other. And one network are the kids, the pioneers, who want to make it work. And another network are the settlers, who don't make it work. And then they are fighting. So, so innovation is networking. So what this means is that they are, they, are, they are against it. And the question is, who are the best networkers? Are they the creators or the settlers? No, not the creators, because they are selling an idea that doesn't exist yet. They even have a hard time explaining what they want. So who wins the discussion? The settler. Why? Because the settler has one question. And the question is very easy. Who says it's going to work? <laughs> and he wins. He wins. And then he goes to the followers and he says to the followers, do you think it's going to work? And the followers say, no, I have to wait. And then he says, we don't think it's going to work. Now, if you have more than 50, you have a union. <laughs> <coughs> Understand? And this is the problem. I'm not against the union, but you need people who support change. You need to do something within your organization. You have to have a system where people are able to put in ideas who help to change your portfolio, portfolio, which help to perform your mission of your organization. And this could be a red market channel. So creator says, I have an idea. And then you need to have pioneers to make it work. And this is where this is also open innovation. What you can't do is the next thing. Hey guys, we have an idea, who has time? It's palliative care on an idea, it will die. No, you have to do something else. You have to do something. Suppose you have an organization with different business units, and these are your, your clients, and these are your uh, partners, and these are your children of your employees, and this whatever. Then you have to do the next thing. Hey guys, we have an incredible idea. Who has the passion and talent to make it work? And they can come from my own business unit, they can come from another business unit, they can come from our customers, they can come from our suppliers, they can come from whatever. And this is open incubation. And then suddenly you have a sheep that says, man, I want to be part of this team. So that's the reason why you can't work with function descriptions anymore. It will be role-based, it will be networking. And then, then you have a team which will make it work. 
and then you go to the flowers and they say, Jesus, man, this works. I want to be a part of this change. And then you have this donkey sitting at the edge of the road and he says, well, I was always against it, but I always believed in it. <laughs> he changes because he wants to be part of the winning team. So innovation is not anymore a top-down thing. No, it's getting together the right passionate people with the right talents at the right place. So, so what is the most important word? And these are my last, last slides, my final words. We have to start a movement of 3D respect. If I would be a CEO or CEO or whatever top management executive, I would say, well, guys, the world is changing. It's not my fault. It's evolution. So I would ask the settlers and followers to have respect for creators and find it because maybe next time they are a creator and they don't like their ideas to be shot. And if you don't have creators and pioneers, you won't exist anymore. And I would ask the creators and pioneers to have respect for the settlers and the followers because next time maybe you don't understand and then you're a settler and follower and if you don't have settler and followers, who's going to do it once it works? And then I would say, who doesn't respect this, I will shoot. <coughs> this is top management. Your CEO has to make sure that your organization evolves based on three respect. So uh, the consensus model, which was okay in 2D, loses its value. Today we are moving to a respectful conflict model.